Hello, you're watching Afternoon Live. I'm Martine Croxall. Today at 2. Coming up on Afternoon Live, all the sport with Will Perry. And the end of an era for England cricket. It very much. Chris Fawkes has all the weather. It's still pretty mild. How long is it going to last? The a little clue. Thank you, Chris. Also coming up, the Duke and Duchess of... Hello, this is Afternoon Live. I'm Martine Croxall. Theresa May has insisted she will not let the country down over Brexit. Speaking at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham, where her EU strategy has been the focus of strong criticism from some in her party, Mrs May defended her plans. She said no one wanted a good deal more than her, and she appealed to her critics to unite behind her, even if they didn't always agree with her. The Prime Minister also announced a new strategy to improve the treatment of cancer, with new diagnostic centres and early scans for patients. Here's our political correspondent, Ben Wright. Rescue workers in Indonesia say time is running out to find any more survivors after the earthquake and tsunami, which struck last week. 1,400 people are known to have died and hundreds of thousands more are in desperate need of aid. Emergency teams are still trying to reach remote areas. Rebecca Henschke sent this report from the island of Sulawesi. The coroner at the inquest into the Westminster Bridge attack has begun delivering his conclusions, starting with a tribute to the great dignity of the victims' families. Judge Mark Lucraft, QC, said one of the most iconic areas of London was the site of a deliberate act of terrorism on the 22nd of March last year. He described Khalid Massoud's attack in a rented car, saying throughout its passage across the bridge, on the roadway, on the pavement, in the cycle lane, and moving between those places, it was driven with a clear, murderous intent. The first survivor of the Grenfell Tower fire to give evidence at the inquiry has been describing the moment he tried to leave his 10th floor flat after his son had woken him up and told him to get out. Antonio Roncolato, who lived in the flats for 27 years, said he opened his door and was confronted with thick black smoke. It hurt his eyes and he thought it would kill him, so he didn't leave. Daniela Ralph reports from the inquiry. You may find some of the images in her report distressing. Sport now on Afternoon Live with Will. Will, 2019 is going to be a really big year for um, the England cricket team, but they're going to have to face it, I believe, with one of their very prominent off-field leaders. Theresa May has closed the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham with an appeal to the party to stick together and support her Brexit strategy, saying she was standing up for Britain. The speech set out to banish memories of last year's conference when she was beset by a cough, a security breach and a collapsing set. The presenter and DJ Zoe Ball will become the first woman to host BBC Radio 2's breakfast show when she takes over from Chris Evans in January. With nine million listeners a week, it's the UK's most listened to breakfast show. This morning, Zoe Ball said she was thrilled, but said she didn't underestimate the challenge. Here's our entertainment correspondent, Lizo Mazimba. Hello, you're watching Afternoon Live. I'm Martine Croxall, today at three. Hello, this is Afternoon Live. I'm Martine Croxall. Theresa May has insisted she will not let the country down over Brexit. Speaking at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham, where her EU strategy has been the focus of strong criticism from some in her party, Mrs May defended her plans. She said no one wanted a good deal more than her, and she appealed to her critics to unite behind her, even if they didn't always agree with her. The Prime Minister also announced a new strategy to improve the treatment of cancer with new diagnostic centres and earlier scans for patients. Here's our political correspondent, Ben Wright. Our assistant political editor, Norman Smith, is in Birmingham for us uh, now. Uh, probably relief that there were no calamities and she even dared to dance, Norman. Thank you very much, Norman Smith. Well, the Prime Minister says her new cancer strategy plans will form a central part of her long-term plan for the NHS. The early detection rate is to be increased from 1 in 2 to 3 in 4 by lowering the age of bowel cancer screening from 60 to 50. Investments will be made in rapid diagnostic centres and the latest screening equipment. And Mrs May promised these changes would mean that by 2028, 55,000 more people would be alive five years after their diagnosis compared to today. Our health editor, Hugh Pym, told us more. Hugh Pym, our health editor. Rescue workers in Indonesia say time is running out to find any more survivors after the earthquake and tsunami that struck last week. 1,400 people are known to have died and hundreds of thousands more are in desperate need of aid. 
Emergency teams are still trying to reach, re reach remote areas. Rebecca Henschke sent this report from the island of Sulawesi. The coroner at the inquest into the Westminster Bridge attack has been delivering his conclusions into the deaths of each of the five victims. Judge Mark Lucraft QC started with a tribute to the great dignity of the victims' families. He described events on the 22nd of March last year as one of the most iconic areas of London as an act, a deliberate act of terrorism. Our correspondent Richard Lister spoke to us earlier from outside the Old Bailey. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has called the former Russian spy Sergei Skripal a scumbag and accused him of betraying his motherland. Mr Skripal and his daughter Yulia were poisoned with a nerve agent administered by Russian intelligence officers in Salisbury in March. Our Moscow correspondent Sarah Rainsford has the details. Sarah Rainsford in Moscow. The first survivor of the Grenfell Tower fire to give evidence at the inquiry has been describing the moment he tried to leave his 10th floor flat after his son had woken him up and told him to get out. Antonio Roncolato, who lived in the flats for 27 years, said he opened his door and was confronted with thick black smoke. It hurt his eyes and he thought it would kill him, so he didn't leave. Daniela Relf reports from the inquiry. You may find some of the images in her report distressing. Uh, one of the victims of the uh, Westminster Bridge terror attack of March last year, the uh, chief coroner who has been uh, presiding over the uh, inquest into the death of the five victims, uh, has uh, reached the conclusion that all five uh, were unlawfully killed. That was the conclusion from Mark Lucraft QC, who's been sitting at the Old Bailey in, uh, after those inquests, which he described as a deliberate act of terror. That's it from us. Time for the weather.